Today on Let's Fish TV, we are at Sam Rayburn Reservoir. You know, this is a place that holds near and dear to my heart. It's a great bass fishing destination, but today we're going after crappie. This place is loaded with big crappie. We're in the springtime of the year and the weather is nice, minus a huge wind front that came in. It's gonna be blowing 20 to 25 miles an hour today. We're gonna show you just how to catch them when it gets tough. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That's a big one right there. <laughs> it's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southwest region every week. You ever caught a fish that big? No. <laughs> Got it. Now the day. Mm. There you go. Another redfish. Got, Got him. It. Now that's what Let's Fish TV is all about, right there, guys. Welcome to Let's Fish TV. I'm your host, Andrew Upshaw, and today we're at Sam Rayburn Reservoir. Sam Rayburn is known to be one of the best big bass fisheries in the United States, but today we're going after crappie. That's right. We're going to be using a long pole, using our active target two by Lawrence. Today is going to be a lot of fun. We'll also have this week's fishing report from your local region from our insider reporters. In the meantime, I'm going to get this Bass Cat Mercury launch, get everything set up, and we'll toss it back to the studio for your weekend planner. Hi everybody, it looks like we will have another good weekend to go fishing. The Salooner Tables are predicting good game fish activity both days this weekend. Expect action to kick off very early around 3.28 on Saturday and 4.24 on Sunday morning. Prime daytime hours will start at 3.59 Saturday and 4.58 Sunday afternoon. Depending on your area, you can expect the sun to rise around 7.01 and set at 7.58. The moon will have 28% visibility. Stay in the loop with Let's Fish TV's latest fishing adventures and tips by joining us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget Andrew will be doing an academy tour, so look to our social media pages to see when and where he will be next. All right, guys, today we're headed out on Sam Rayburn. As you can tell, the wind's already starting to kick up a little bit, and it's going to get way, way bigger today. You know, we're expected 20, 25 mile an hour winds this afternoon, but we're heading out today we're going crappie fishing and we're going to go get in and around some of the shallow cover 8 to 12 14 foot of water back ends of drains leading to spawning pockets and see if we can find some on standing timber you know sam rayburn is known for its bass fishing and stuff but today we're going after crappie and i love catching crappie on rayburn we're getting away from the brush piles we're getting away from the community holes we're going fishing where we don't see a lot of boats we're gonna get out there and let's see what we can do I really like to catch them on this little bait. It's a brand new one, Mr. Crappie. Sugar glider. I love this dang color. They made it where they have a little searcher's tail on the, the end of that. A little, about an inch and a half, inch and three quarter bait. Tiny little bait. Those on that tree though are for sure crappie there. I don't know where that one went. Yeah, I don't, oh, there he goes. He's kind of like swimming around us right here. There we go. God choked it. I mean, you couldn't ask for one to eat it as good as that one just ate it. Sitting on top of that tree, and look at that, just gone. Completely gone. The sugar glider's down, the fish's throat. You know, the thing is, I fished a lot of bass tournaments on Sam Rayburn and we've all caught fish we've all caught crappie bass fishing right well in this particular area that i'm in this is the canyons i've caught a ton a ton of crappie bass fishing in here you know throwing crankbaits lipless crankbaits things like that and i've always and i've never until today come in here and crappie fish and and with the advancements in technology that we have using forward facing sonar uh specifically active target 2 it gives you the opportunity to kind of break down water just a little bit faster. And with the water dropping every, the way it is right now, everybody gets so concerned with brush piles. You know, it's everything like, I gotta go find a new brush pile. But the reality is there's so many crappie in Sam Rayburn, Toledo Bend, and some of the area lakes around here that you really, all you have to do is get in standing timber and start looking with that active target too. And it's gonna help you find more fish quickly and help you catch more as well. But 
it's all about understanding what stage the fish are in. You know, the fish out here have been trying to spawn for the last month or so, but the water continues to fluctuate. When that happens, the fish aren't able to get up there and spawn like they need to because the water's dropping so quickly. So one thing that's happened at Sam Rayburn is, yeah, we've had a little bit of a spawn, but a lot of these crappies still have eggs in them. So what that means is these fish are really staged up near spawning grounds where they would typically spawn, waiting for that water to stabilize so they can pull up there to spawn. So what I'm in is I'm actually in a drain, the back end of a drain. You know, we started out in the mouth, didn't catch any, and as soon as we got towards the back end of the drain where they would typically go spawn, we started catching more fish. So pay attention to the water quality and what is going on, and it will help you catch more fish. And as you know, the season progresses as the, the everything changes, you know, the water stabilizes, the fish actually get to spawn. They'll start migrating back out, getting brush piles, getting deeper timber. But right now, they're staged up and they are fat and full and a lot of them. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you once again by the good folks at Freeman Toyota, home of the seven year, 100,000 mile free warranty on your new vehicle and three years oil changes and tire rotations. Now this week we've come out to beautiful, historic Caddo Lake in deep east Texas and we're fishing for bass. Now you're going to want to know that these bass will be around the cypress knees but not like they were during the spawn. Now they're going to start moving out a little bit. Throw your top waters early. Once that dies out, look for your grass beds and you want to throw things like a ocho with maybe a little bling on it, a little spinner on the back. And of course, you can also use a swim bait on a weighted or unweighted hook. I prefer a small weight on that to get it down right over the top of that submerged grass. Now out at Lake Whitney, we've got a great sand bass bite going on. You're going to want to look to the humps like the McCown Valley humps. It's a community hole. There may be other boats out there unless you get there early, but get out there early, throw your top waters, your pop bars and your small traps and even your slabs and spoons to catch those Whitney Sandies this time of year. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes. Check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. I think it's right there. I mean that, oh, there it is, okay. All right, we're about to catch one here. Oh, it got me wrapped up in the tree. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's a good fat one there. A nice little crappie right there. There's five or six on that tree right there. Man, they really, really like that little sugar glider there. That thing is just money. What a nice fish. Look how fat that thing is. Got eggs still in it, no doubt about it. You can see them. Yep, yep, still got eggs in it. And I mean, guys, this, is, this isn't this is even a big one. Actually, the last time I was here, I caught way bigger crappie than what we're catching right now. But a good eating size fish, no doubt about it. The thing is, it's all about having the right equipment when you're jigging in and around this timber. You know, this is a rod that I take literally all across the south this is one that i have with me i actually the cool thing is a three-piece rod so i can actually put it in my truck and have it ready to go in case i have a crappie tournament crappie show whatever it might be but it is the pro target rod so wally marshall pro target rods a 14 footer you know i have the 16 and i use the 16 quite a bit but i like the 14 the best it's balanced well it's really light i put a 100 size speed shooter reel on it i just like the lime green and it's really really good drag system but the really unique thing about this is it allows you to reach out and touch the fish but it's not even just for using on Active Target 2 or Forward Facing Sonar, even though that is exactly what it was designed for. This is also a rod that I can jig around cypress trees in and around heavy cover brush. You know, I actually had a show not too long ago on Lake Okeechobee where I was using this exact same rod and jigging around the reeds and bushes where the fish were spawning. So it's a, a multi-purpose rod that you can do a ton of different things with. And it's just one that I keep rigged all the time. But I get so many questions. This is the one question I get the most is, man, Andrew, why do you use this yellow braid? This is Strike King Contra Braid 10 pound line. I don't use a leader. I don't use any fluorocarbon or anything like that. I use straight braid to my bait. Now, if you're really worried about the fish seeing your line, and, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I've caught way too many crappie for me to really be worried about that. But if you're worried about that, one thing you can do is you can actually take a Sharpie and you can sharpie your line 
you know, just a regular Sharpie, like permanent marker, and you can color it black all the way up until this bead, and it will camouflage that line a little bit. But I use the yellow braid so I can actually detect the bite by sight. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when they eat this thing, especially when you're jigging around heavy cover, it is some of the hardest bites you've ever had in your life and easily one of the most fun things you will ever do. But the fish are biting here at Rayburn. I'm gonna get back to it. We'll see y'all here in just a second. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorenz, the ultimate fishing system, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach Tourism, Let's Fish on Alabama's beaches, Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. That one actually has its tuxedo on. That's a white crappie. It's just, it's getting up there, getting ready to spawn. There we go. Oh. That's not a bad one. That one actually has its tuxedo on. That's a white crappie. It's just black because they it's getting up there, getting ready to spawn. It's a nice crappie there. It's a pretty fish, man. What a nice crappie here on Rayburn. But you know, today guys, what we're doing is we're just jigging in and around where these fish should be staged up. And and having, you know, I talked about having the right equipment, having the right rod, reel. You know, if you've watched any of my Let's Fish TV shows, you know I, I keep the rigs fairly simple. When it's jigging around heavy cover, whether it be reeds, uh, brush, standing timber, open water fish, I keep my rig just about the same all the time. And what that does is it keeps it more simple. The more simple you can keep your bait and what you're doing, the better off you're gonna be. So I use a little tungsten bead and I actually use, these are Strike King bobber stoppers. I put one at the top, you see, right there? And I put one at the bottom, all right? And what it does is it keeps that bead in line. This is a tungsten bead, and the tungsten bead just has a better return on uh, Active Target 2. And I use an eighth ounce Slab Slasher Jig Head by Mr. Crappie. I, about 99.9999% of the time, use a pink head. But this time of year, especially, when the fish are getting more pressure, they're getting ready to spawn, I like to go a little bit more natural, but I, ha I always like to have a little sartreuse on there. Something about that little bit of sartreuse does get them triggered. That monkey shine definitely seems to be the color today. I can get it next to a crappie and it's absolutely immediate. Hey, it's Matt Pengrack with the Bass Talk Live podcast, and this is your weekly fishing report for the state of Oklahoma. We're going to talk about a really fun bite that is going on right now uh, as we get later into April, and that is the white bass bite on Fort Gibson Lake. You know, white bass are a great species to target if you're looking for a little bit of table fare. Also, if you're just looking to catch a bunch of fish, get some kids out, get their rods bent. The white bass bite is awesome. It doesn't take uh, a lot of tackle to get the job done either. Either a small swim bait, a two and a half to three inch swim bait on a quarter to three eighths ounce jig head or a rooster tail or some sort of spinner like that or even a small crankbait gets the job done. Now in Fort Gibson, you're gonna wanna look for the shad. The white bass this time of the year are gonna be feeding up on the shad and you're gonna wanna look on secondary points or main lake points towards the lower end, towards the dam on rock transitions and rock breaks. Once you find these fish, you can also locate them often surfacing, chasing bait on the surface late in the evenings or early in the mornings. And then you just stay with the school of fish. You can catch them cast after cast, usually between 14 and 15 inches, pound and a half to two pound fish, a really fun fighting fish where you can catch 20, 30, 40 of these things in a day once you locate them. Hey, for more information on bass fishing, not only across the state of Oklahoma, but across the country, check out the BTL podcast every Monday through Thursday on the Bass Talk Live YouTube channel and iTunes. Oh, he's vertical. Oh my gosh. He went vertical on it and then didn't eat. Oh, there he goes. Oh, heck yeah. That was awesome. Golly, man. I love catching him on this big pole. It's so much fun. Oh, there we go. 
Oh God, look at that. How many, this thing is blown out with eggs right now. Just swallowed this little sugar glider. I'm gonna go ahead and get this anchor locked on this motor guide. You know, and that's one real key thing when you're crappie fishing, you know. God, you can just see the eggs bubbling out of this fish. Get that fish back real quick. But the one thing about it, I attached my, my Active Target 2 transducer to the foot of my trolling motor. And this is a Motor Guide Tour Pro. And one thing that you want to do is you want to turn that troll motor down. You know, the, the Motor Guide Tour Pro is such a quiet trolling motor that you can creep around and you can look at this timber, but when you catch one, you can hit that anchor mode on it and actually stop on exactly where you were sitting. You know, we're, we're literally sitting right next to the tree that I just caught a couple of fish out of without getting out of place too badly. And that is a big key when you're out here because let's say for instance you did not have a, an anchor function troll motor like we have today you by the time you got that fish landed and got put in your live you know your live well your cooler or whatever or even throwing it back like we are today you might be 50 60 yards down there because the wind is blowing so hard today troll motors got me locked in and the rods got me locked on so we're gonna go catch us a couple more let's fish tv is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors, have fun out there. Powerful, total boat control. Balls out, made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on, challenge your limits. But when they're knocking slack in that crappie jig, there's just nothing better. I mean, it is just so much fun catching these fish. Just call him a shot now. This is getting fun. Nice little crappie. I love casting to him. I mean, jigging's fun, but when you cast to him, I mean, we're, we're catching really similar size crappie what we were before. But when they're knocking slack in that crappie jig, there's just nothing better. I mean, it is just so much fun catching these fish. These are the perfect size eating crappie. These are the ones that I recommend eating. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll eat a, a good size one, a pound and a half, two pounder, but I like throwing those back a lot more times than not, just for the fact of, I, I just don't like eating the big ones. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, but there's a lot of crappie in this lake. Sam Rayburn's absolutely full of them. You know, guys, today we've we've made a couple adjustments. We started out the day using the long pole, jigging around this timber. The wind got up pretty significantly to the point where if you got too close to the timber, it would spook the fish away. So we actually had to pick up the casting rod, start, you know, just flinging it around at some of these crappie on this isolated piece of the timber. And as you notice, you don't even see the tree in front of us. Now you can see standing timber all around us, but the fish right now, they're at the tail end of the drain right before it flattens out. And what I mean by that is the drain snakes in here and it's a, the last little deep section. It's about 12 to 14 foot right here. And if you go about 50 yards this way, it flattens up to about eight to 10 foot. And I didn't see any crappie up there. And now out there even deeper, I didn't see any crappie either. They're literally right here on the last deepest part. And a lot of that has to do with the water dropping. Hey friends, Captain Kevin Broussard here with this week's Let's Fish Report coming to you from Cajun Paradise Charters here in Hackberry, Louisiana. We're going to start out right here on Calcasieu Lake. We call it Big Lake. Tell you what, we did get a couple inches of rain. We had a little bit of dirty fresh water come down to the north end. Jetty's got lots of big bull redfish, a few slot redfish. Tell you what, the south end of the lake, lots of trout starting to show up along with West Cove. Soft plastics, eighth and quarter ounce jig heads is the key there. Redfish seems to live shrimps the best. Fresh water. The bass are still spawning at all your lakes. Talk to people at Caney, Caddo, Toledo, Fussy Break. Biggest thing is if you do catch a big one, take a picture, measure it, handle it with care, let her go, let her go do her thing. But I tell you what, right now fishing is on fire all across the whole great state of Louisiana, so get out on the water. Give us a call, 
2740788 for Old Cajun Field. This is Captain Kevin Broussard saying, let's fish. All right, here it comes. There we go, that's a better one there. Oh yeah, that's a nice crappie. Black crappie too. Look at the size of that one. That's a pretty one. There we go. Little one. Wind is really starting to kick up. I think we're gonna get ready to head back to the boat ramp to talk to y'all a little bit about what we've done today and how we've caught them here on Sam Rayburn. Guys, awesome lake, awesome fishing. If you're around this area, you need to come ch check out Sam Rayburn. The fishing is hot. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lake Hartwell Country. Catch the feeling. Lose, feel the difference. Strike King, tie one on. And by Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Today on Sam Rayburn, used a couple different things to catch my fish. You know, the first thing I picked up was the big pole, this 14 foot, lose wally marshall pro target rod this is a very big rod made for dipping in and around cover today i was using it with active target 2 dipping around real big old trees and that was the big key is finding those big trees in the backs of drains but that 14 footer allows you to reach out and almost touch the fish and on attached to that was a brand new bait by strike king this is the strike king mr crappie sugar glider the color that i was using today is called monkey shine normally this would be like a monkey milk it's a blue glimmer type bait but monkey shine actually has a little chartreuse tail and for whatever reason guys i'm gonna tell you right now i've been doing it for quite some time i always dip the tail of my little uh lightning chads and other baits but that little chartreuse tail just wiggling back there gets you a lot of extra bites an eighth ounce slab slasher jig head by mr crappie rounded that out but you know whenever the wind got real big and, and i'm gonna tell you right now we were in protected areas and the wind still got real big when it got big you couldn't get close to that cover anymore and it made it so much more difficult to be able to catch them with a the long pole that's when i picked up my casting rod this is a pro target six and a half foot rod medium light six pound line okay it's literally the exact same setup we're doing the tungsten bead with two Strike King bobber stoppers, but a 16th ounce Sartreuse jig head, slap slasher jig head, with the same exact sugar glider by Mr. Crappie. And it was so important to actually toss the bait past the fish and just kind of glide it. And that's what makes the sugar glider so good, is when it glides through the water, it still has a shimmy in action that will actually trigger those bites. But I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna tell you guys, the MVP today of everything that I was using was my Active Target 2. You know, it makes, fishing that much easier it makes it so much easier for any angler to go out find fish catch fish no matter if you're a beginner or somebody's done it for 25 years active target 2 i know it might get some flack from time to time it has definitely made crappie fishing more fun and easier for children and people that haven't been able to do it so if you get a chance check out active target 2 by lawrence it is a, an absolute game changer i hate using that word but it is it's, it is what it is it's a game changer and it will make your fishing that much better but guys i hope y'all learned how to find and catch them here on sam rayburn i know this place is a, a lot of fun today was a little difficult with the wind but we still got it done and until next time i'll see you on the water